Looking at this image here, we can see this is a flower room. We're going to go over some of the suggestions for lighting a flower room, even though this one uses a lot of high pressure sodium lights. So the flower room is where the maximum PAR rating is needed for your plants. So that's where it's definitely worth getting a PAR meter and comparing to make sure you are supplying your plants with adequate amounts. They will need to, they will be under the most stress, so maximizing cannabinoid production is an important part of the flower room. Setting them up well, uh, while in the vegetative stage in particular, will make this stage easier, I call it. Because if the plants come in poorly and poor structure and stressed, it's going to make the flower room's job a lot harder. If they come in a lot healthier and well and robust, then that prepares them well for the flowering stage, because this is where typically the most stress it, the plants will be under. So high pressure sodium lights are considered the current standard light to use. We can see a lot while they are off in this image. We can see how many are hanging above the plants here. Uh, the all-in-one ballast, ballast reflector and bulb setup is preferred versus one that is separate. You can see that we do have the ballast, the reflector and the bulb all in one unit here. Keep in mind that the um, hour life of the bulb for high pressure sodiums is 5,000 to about 8,000 hours maximum. So that's something to take in consideration if you're going through and lighting a, a flower room with that. To keep in mind the hours so you're cheating those bulbs out before they really wear out and cut down on your overall potential for harvest. The reflectors should also be changed out about every other year uh, because you want to maximize the amount of light getting to your plants. So it could be the bulbs. Most growers are changing those out about every year. Uh, or a little less, and changing the reflectors out about every other year. Uh, we could see the high pressure sodium lights, keep in mind, will produce that kind of yellowish, orangish kind of tones here. As I said, they are in this image, but the lights are off. Ceramic metal halides are light emitting plasmas. The light emitting plasmas are being phased out in general. Ceramic metal halides, uh, CMHs, provide spectrum that's not present in the high pressure sodiums, but there's a lack in total output. However, in some cases, both generally favoring uh, the ceramic metal halides are being used in addition to high pressure sodium lights to increase the spectrum the plants are receiving. So in this image we can see the vast um, majority of the light kind of spill over on the walls here uh, is high pressure sodium. But CMHs, this is a CMH here, this is a CMH here, are being used in between the high pressure sodiums. In this case we're kind of maximizing the plant spectrum, uh, uh, the spectrum of light that the plants are going to be receiving. Uh, LEPs could also serve this purpose, but typically due to cost uh, and the fact that they're not really being used as much anymore, the ceramic metal halides are being used in for veg, and some growers are transitioning with the same structures as part of their flower room to help increase the spectrum those plants are getting. Lastly, we have LEDs, and full-spectrum LEDs are progressing and will likely be the preferred light going forward. Many benefits of the full-spectrum, in, in addition to having low power consumption, a low profile, and reduced heat generation. However, some of these are really cost prohibitive, so while they may be the best option from the plant standpoint, uh, from the grower standpoint, it might not be um, cost effective currently. So for flowering, you don't always have to be growing under high pressure sodiums. There are some other options, and even some of those lights that may be used for the vegetative stage can kind of be carried over for the flowering to give them that fuller spectrum to hopefully maximize terpene and cannabinoid production.